WWE Network presents Stomping Grounds Kickoff. Good evening, the countdown is flat out on. The WWE Universe has come into here, the Tacoma Dome in the Pacific Northwest still fouling in, and there you see the unforgiving steel cage. Much more on that coming up over the course of the next hour. Let's bring you aside. Welcome to the very first ever WWE Stomping Grounds. I am the coach, and over the course of the next 60 minutes, we're going to get you set for the event that's going to kick off the summer over the course of the next couple of months leading up to SummerSlam in August. But the big question tonight, will Becky two belts at one point leave this event as Becky no belts? That question and so much more. Let's get to know the panel here tonight. To my immediate left, my co-host, the lovely and also oh talented Charlie Caruso. Good evening. Coach, I am so excited for tonight. All I got to say is it's time to kick some ass and take some names. I like it. To my right, the best dressed man in all of the WWE. He's a movie star. He is Harvard educated. He is the one and only Mr. David Otunga. Sir. Well, hello. I like that introduction. <laughs> he got it best right. Dress. He did. He got it right. Thank you so much. So excited to be here for the first ever stomping grounds. Somebody's going to get stomped out. You know, and right. And this man all the way at the end, he's done a bunch of stomping in his Hall of Fame career. Welcome, Mr. Booker T. Yeah, I'm about to start stomping in a minute. The best dress. You know, but I second that. Oh, it, it's okay. time to, to kick some, some you know what. Let's do this. Absolutely. <laughs> we have so much excitement ahead of us. First time in WWE's history, Stomping Grounds has finally arrived yep. here at the Tacoma Dome. And we have a whole lot in store for everybody tonight. So let's kick things off with telling you about the only place that you can catch all the Stomping Grounds action. That's on the WWE Network. So head on over right this second to WWENetwork.com. Sign up because Stomping Grounds is free for new subscribers, but hey, it does not stop there. Also free for new subscribers in three weeks from today, Extreme Rules. But what do you say we talk about what's going down tonight, Buck? Yeah, yeah, after Super Showdown, Baron Corbin had the chance to redeem himself as he takes on Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. And tonight, special guest referee at his decision. Hey, still to be determined. We're gonna find out tonight. Yeah, and after a war of words and social media accusations, SmackDown Women's Champion Bayley will defend her championship against the goddess, Alexa Bliss. And Bliss will have her new best friend with her, Nikki Cross. David, there is no social media here. Just two studs, two warriors, two big-time egos, Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre one-on-one. And we have some high-flying action in the Cruiserweight division with the Cruiserweight title on the line. It's triple threat action going down between the champion, Tony Nisa, Kira Tozawa, and Drew Gulak. Right here on the kickoff show, might I add. Hey, when you see this man do what he do, you just say, that man, Ricochet, he earned this title shot. United States Championship on the line tonight with Samoa Joe, the precision tactician defense. Guys, this one is going to be good. Oh, yeah. And then the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships are on the line. Heavy Machinery, they get their first tag team title opportunity. But Daniel Bryan and Rowan have vowed to not only improve the SmackDown Tag Team division, but also save the planet and recycle Heavy Machinery. <laughs> and the sassy Southern Belle Lacey Evans getting another go at the Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch, looking to steal her title and make her Becky no belts. I like that right there, but representing the New Day, Big E and Xavier Woods taking on KO, Kevin Owen, and Sami Zayn. Best friends tonight, guys. We're going to see what happens. Oh, the New Day has a big night tonight because their third member, the WWE Champion Kofi, uh, he's had a great two months, but back comes Dolph Ziggler. Shows up, swag, confidence, wants to spoil the party, and he wants it inside of his still cage so that those other two members can't be a part of it. It all goes down tonight, and what will happen when these two get inside? That's still kick. Well, I think there's one word that you can use to describe Dolph Ziggler, and that would be obsession. Kofi won the WWE title, and it should have been me. It should be me. We're about to find out if Kofi Kingston's fairy tale run will continue. You keep on saying that it should have been you. It will never. You. I gave everything. I gave my soul. This is about me. Oh! Ziggler with his assault on Xavier Woods. 
That was completely uncalled for. Roll up by Dolph, down, Kofi able to kick. Xavier wants a little payback! Boom! And Kofi Kingston retains! I thought Kofi was a hero. Kofi is nothing but a coward. If it wasn't for your buddies, I would be WWE Champion right now. But at stomping grounds, you and I will be locked inside a steel cage. You said that I took the coward's way out. But at stomping grounds, the time is gonna come to kick ass and take names, and the name that I'm gonna take is Dolph Ziggler. You don't deserve to be WWE Champion. Without the New Day, you'd be nothing. The next time you go back to Ghana, it's gonna be an apology tour. It will be me slamming your body into that unforgiving steel. It will be me grinding your face into that steel cage. Nowhere for you to run. Nowhere for you to hide. No one to save you from me. It will be me. All right, Book, well, here we are inside the unforgiving yes. structure of the steel cage. This is where the WWE Championship match going down between Dolph Ziggler and Kofi Kingston. Now, you know this structure all too well. Tell me, how do you prepare for a steel cage match? And once you're inside, what's the strategy? I mean, a lot of times there's no preparation. Uh, you have to think on the fly. I mean, you are inside the steel cage. I mean, first of all, you have to think about one thing, and that is the structure. I mean, this is steel. This is solid. This here, it's American made right here. So those guys are going to have to be thinking on their feet. Now, first of all, you got two quick guys. The first thing I'm going to want to do is get to the top of that cage. Now, quickness, staying on your staying on your bicycle is something that you want to do. Now, on the other hand, you got the opponent that, you know, want to crush his uh, opponent. You, you, you want to take him down. You want to drive him. You want to grind on him. Now, both of these guys, you never know what's going to happen. It's all about winning at the end of the day. Now, who's going to win? That's the question. How much does the mental game play a part when you're inside a structure like you this? You know, mentally, um, you got to throw it out of the window because you know you're going to go through a lot of pain. I always say these kind of matches right here, I didn't have a lot of these matches in my career. You know, promoter used to come to me and say, Booker, how about let's do a cage match? I'll say, let's not do that. I'm going to pass that on to the next guy. But when you're trying to make history, when you're trying to put your name up in the bright lights with all the great legends of the business, sometimes you're willing to go that extra mile. And I think both of these guys are willing to go that extra mile. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much, Book. Let's throw things back to the panel. Booyah, baby. Charlie, thank you very much. And we're joined here at the desk now by the other two members of the New Day, of course, Big E and yes. Xavier. And <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. We are here on the Gentlemen, panel. Gentlemen, yes, yes. Booker T just brought up a lot of good points, and I want to start with this. Kofi has been trying to make his name, his legacy now as a mm -hmm. WWE champion. Mm -hmm. So he welcomes mm -hmm. challenges like this. Mm -hmm. How has he been preparing mm -hmm. for Dolph inside of that steel cage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, the thing is, Dolph might be watching this. So if we give Dolph the information about how Kofi is preparing for this match, then he's got the upper hand on our friend, our boy, the champion, the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. <laughs> he's thirsty. Y'all right over there, E? Thirsty for victory. See that? As yeah. is Kofi. As am I. Yeah. I got a question for you. I mean, Dolph says the only reason that Kofi beat him at Super Showdown was because of you. What do you think about that? <laughs> if you kick a man, you should be expecting to be kicked back by that same man. Dolph had no reason to come after me, and so all I did was set the, the stage even. If Dolph can't get the upper hand after that, that's on him. He made that choice. He's a grown man. He does his own thing. Let me ask you this, because you spent several weeks leading up to WrestleMania and saying, what does Kofi have to do? What opportunities does he have to get over? Now that he's the champion, now they're allowing him, or allowing Dolph to get the steel cage match that he wants. How do you guys feel about the fact 
then now you won't be able to be involved. Coach, he don't need us. He don't need us. Coach, 11 years 11. of doing his thing. Coach, he don't need us. He don't need us, but we will have his back. We will have his, uh, you know, his goods. We'll exactly. have his, his you, goods. You're, you're, they call yeah. you coach because you're yeah. a coach, right? Right. So you know if you've got three-star players on the team, they can get it done if the other two can't be there for them, right? Yeah. Just like Kobe's going to get it done, and we're going to get it done against Sammy and Kevin tonight because we're about to stomp on their grounds. So you're saying Ooh, that tonight, like that. because you both have two matches, you guys could be the MVP of the night. Will be. Will be. Fix your vernacular, coach. My will bad. be. My yes. bad. Yes, it is your bad. All right, Xavier, Biggie, Xavier. thank you very there's much. A, there's an yeah. X in my name. Coach, Pronounce it, please. Good, good job, I guess. I said coach. Xavier. X, thank you. Right. Good. Coach, Sometimes it doesn't coach, roll do better. Off. Coach, we all want yeah. you to do better. How about yeah. that? We, we used You're to good. dance together. We used to. Coach, and now, changed. now I feel like we're on the I wrong side of the fence together. I wish I could take that dance back. Yeah. Coach, do better. Let's get it back. Dan, help me. Do something with I got it. I got it. I got it. Also, tonight, what a battle as Seth Rollins has to be speaking of titles. Goes up against Baron Corbin for the Universal Come Championship. On, and Baron Corbin still has yet to make the special guest referee. But much like Co Kofi, Come Seth on, Rollins go. has taken on all comers. Stop, stop it, coach. It's coach. Come on, coach. Seth Rollins defending the Universal title versus Baron Corbin. Seth Rollins will fight till there's absolutely no breath left in his lungs. The dive to the ropes. Can Rollins capitalize? Deep six by Corbin. Rollins in two and a half. One, two, three. Corbin, it was two. Count to three. Corbin, no. He's going to get himself disqualified. cost me that match, and you know it. I get my rematch at Stomping Grounds, and I'm taking your Universal Championship. To make sure there's no mistakes, we'll have a special guest referee. That I get the hand pick. All Corbin needs to do is find a reliable official, and we're gonna have a new Universal Champion. Seth Rollins doesn't stand a chance. Special guest referee. I hit the hand. <laughs> We're gonna have a new Universal Champion. I am done playing games. Oh, Seth Rollins! This is a message for anyone considering that position. If you side with Baron Corbin, I don't care what he's promised you. This is what awaits you. Nobody is going to want to be guest referee this Sunday. You should worry about me. And Corbin from behind with a steel chair. Because after stomping ground, I'll be the new Universal Champion. Baron, we are less than an hour from the start of WWE Stomping Grounds, and I think the question on everyone's mind is, have you made your choice on who will be your special guest referee? <laughs> Kayla, look, a lot of people want this opportunity. I've had people knocking on my door all morning. I mean, it's an amazing chance. So I have picked my referee. And that is, <laughs> it's a secret. Why would I tell you? Why would I tell Seth Rollins? I want to keep Seth Rollins on his toes until I put him on his back and take his title. Well, I think given Seth's rampage over the last couple of weeks with a steel chair, maybe no one is seriously considering your offer. Look, what Seth Rollins did was uncalled for, unnecessary, and it says a lot about him as a person. 
It was sadistic. It was malice. But you know what that tells me, Kayla? That tells me he's scared. At Super Showdown, he knows I had him beat and the ref screwed up. Tonight, I fixed that problem. Tonight, I slay the beast slayer and become universal champion. A lot wow. to chew on there from Baron Corbin. He used a lot of words as we welcome Booker T and Charlie back here to the desk. And I think that should be our jumping off point here, Booker. I'm going to start with you. Sadistic, malice, rampage. Seth Rollins has turned into kind of a guy that we don't know. Mm -hmm. But as the man at the top of the heap, he has to be looking and I guess acting different than what we've ever seen before. You, you may not know Seth Rollins, but you know I've been in this business a long time and I've been watching Seth Rollins grow you know, over the years, and at one point I say, man, this guy, he got, he got so much more growing to do, but I tell you, after slaying the beast, you know, Seth Rollins has, I think he's reached his his full maximum potential, and he coming into this thing, you just, you saw after Monday night, uh, it's no joke, it's serious, uh, all business, no games, no jiving, no playing, uh, just business, and that's, that's what I like about Seth Rollins. Now, on the other hand, Baron Corbin, He's taking this thing really lightly. He thinks he's got an ace in the hole. Mm -hmm. But right now, Seth Rollins is that guy who's uh, who's willing to do anything and I, by any means necessary. That's, right. That's what Seth Rollins is right now. Yeah, so, but I, th I think you know he is taking care of business. But one thing that Baron Corbin said that really resonated with me, and for the first time, Baron Corbin saying something that I kind of believe is Seth Rollins seems scared. I don't think Seth Rollins seems scared at all. I think oh. Baron Corbin seems scared. I think he couldn't find anybody to hold this position as special guest referee. I don't buy it. I think he's bluffing. Really what I think is happening is he's back in his locker room pacing furiously, trying to figure out how he's going to get out of this. I mean, you saw what happened. Anybody he even talked to about becoming the special guest referee, what would Rollins do? I just walked Take past him out with his well, steel chair. I, was in the, I just walked past him. I didn't say nothing. And let's not forget the, I guess, the ace in the hole, the caveat that Mr. Beast in the bank, mm -hmm. we never know. You never where know. Brock Lesnar is going to show up. Am uh, that, I right? That's the one thing. I mean, Brock Lesnar, I mean, he has everything working in his favor. If I was Brock Lesnar, I'd just be sit back, you know, savoring it. I mean, you know, it's like that last bite, you know, that filet mignon. You, you want to savor that bite because you know it's the last time you're going to have it. That's what Brock Lesnar is doing right now. He's just waiting in the wings. You man. think tonight he's going to take the opportunity to cash in? You know what? I, I can't say. I can't say. That, that's, you never know. That's like looking into a crystal ball. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, well, all the superstars tonight obviously have their own matches, their own motivations. As far as Alexa Bliss goes tonight, she continues in her quest to ruin Bailey's reputation and also dethrone the hugger of the SmackDown Women's Championship with Nikki Cross by Alexa's side. Just an entitled little princess that doesn't deserve a damn thing. 
Bailey, I'm not entitled. I'm just better than you. And you will always be a placeholder. And you want to know why? Because you peaked in NXT. Bailey not waiting for stomping grounds now. Nikki Cross trying to pry off Bailey. Bailey is a master manipulator. And after stomping ground, the goddess of WWE reclaims her throne. I am not just Bailey. Bailey has moved past the hugs, and I want everybody in that locker room to bring their best. All right, Booker, I want to start the discussion with you here. I mean, we have all seen Bailey being such a lovable human, you know, the hugger, but we have seen a more aggressive side to her as of late. What do you take of this? You look at Bailey as far as what she's gone through. Here, I mean, it's been, you know, growing pains and growing pains with Bailey. Uh, I always, I always say that the, the, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease, but, but, but Bailey, she hadn't been squeaky. She just been doing the work. She just been putting in the work. But opportunity knocks. She, she, she opens that door and she steps right in. That's what Bailey is all about. Well, I, I want to add to that. How do we know that this hasn't been the real Bailey all along? Because what I thought was interesting in that moment of bliss is what Alexa said. She remembers being bullied when she was a newcomer and started out in NXT, and she reached out to Bailey, who blew her off. That's why this match is so important to Alexa. She's always accused of being this manipulator. On, man. but, no, 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 but hold on. You ain't but now I, but I understand her. That's why she befriends everybody is because she knows what it's like to be a newcomer with no friends. That's what this is about, not to use somebody. Charlie, you know what it's like being in the women's locker room. It could be a cat fight in I there sometimes. I know what it's like being a woman in general. And yes, there are many different motives that women have. So it's hard to really decide who to trust in different situations. I'm still wondering what role, if any, Nikki Cross is going to play tonight as Alexa has been very, very smart, in my opinion, getting close to her with this matchup coming here tonight. And look, she's always been smart. You know, as far as that goes. All She's right. a five-time <laughs> women's champion. All five right, times, we'll, we'll lead the discussion yes. right yeah. there. That comes up later uh, tonight at Stomping Grounds. Let's switch gears now. And there's a new star on the horizon here in the WWE. His name is Ricochet. And last Monday on Raw, how about winning a fatal five-way elimination match for the right? You win this match, and what do you get? You get Samoa Joe. You get a chance at the United States Championship. And Ricochet has become a crowd favorite. He's become a highlight reel, which is something that Samoa Joe is not. And then he attacks Ricochet from behind and, in my opinion, wants to teach him what being a big-time championship superstar is all about. That's what Samoa Joe is. And there you see the highlight reel that I'm talking about when it comes to Ricochet. Tonight is an incredibly big opportunity for this young superstar. And well, if you talk to Samoa Joe, it's way too early to get a chance like this at the United States Championship. But many feel like Ricochet is exactly what this title needs. So let's bring in the young man who joins us right now here in the set who has a chance tonight. And what an opportunity it is for you, Ricochet, to have a chance at Samoa Joe in front of all these people on the big stage. And you uh, heard the people already chanting your name right when you got on set here. Yeah, it was actually, it was pretty cool. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. And I want to give, thank you guys for having me on. because it, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so uh, much. Booker, you, you want to let him talk? Or I mean, is this no, a no, you know what? <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember being what this guy is once upon a time. Yeah. And I tell you, it's got to be a great time, you know, as for the, the, what Ricochet had brought to WWE. It's got to be great. Uh, dude, it, uh, the, whole, the whole journey here has been amazing. And then uh, I know like, it, it's just going to get even more busy now, and I'm, I'm ready to go. Oh. I'm, I'm excited for it. Talk about the opportunity tonight, because it's nice to talk about. But let's be honest, here in a couple hours, you got to walk in that ring and take on one of the meanest, nastiest dudes in the WWE, Samoa Joe. Yeah, uh, man, uh, this, this this opportunity is huge for me. I mean, it means everything. I, I've worked so hard, and you know, I, I've sacrificed a lot to be here. You know, traveling the world, perfecting my craft, pushing myself, you know, to new heights. And uh, uh, with tonight being my first singles title opportunity in the WWE, it's something that I'm definitely not going to take for granted. And I know, with it being against Samoa Joe. Uh, he's definitely going to bring out the best in me, that's for sure. Yeah, and I want to ask you about that. You know, after Rey Mysterio relinquished the United States Championship due to injury, Joe still attacked him and put him to sleep. So what does this tell you about your opponent? 
I'm honest, honestly, that, that's just what Joe does. Uh, he's a bully. Uh, he's relentless. And uh, I know tonight I'm in for the fight of my life because I know he's willing to do anything that he can to, to keep that championship. And, uh, but at the same time, it, it just shows me that he has no respect, you know what I mean? To do something like that to Ray, like, he can be a great champion. Oh, and all, but, Ricochet! Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ricochet! Oh, do, oh, don't think for a second that I'm not back here. Listen, you're out here talk, running your mouth talking about respect. Respect you. You've been here for a cup of coffee and it wasn't a good one. You're over here telling me what I need to do. No, what you need to understand is one simple thing. You know nothing about surviving in the WWE. You know nothing about the level of competition that I compete on. And tonight, I'm gonna teach you that there are levels to this and you are not on my level. Do you understand me? Do you understand what you won in your fatal five way? Hey, there is no doubt you are an amazing athlete. You go out there, you amaze the fans. But that's not gonna save you from me. Being amazing has never saved anybody from the beating that I put on them. So Ricochet, I'm gonna tell you what, tonight I promise you, you will sleep well, but tonight will not be your night. Wow. Well, uh, Ricochet, you have any last words before taking on Samoa Joe? I mean, honestly, I mean, I think we, we, we just heard enough talking and I think tonight I'll give Joe my message in the ring. Ricochet, very, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to that message being sent later, later tonight as you have a chance the United States style. Speaking of a message, how about a tag team with a message? Charles, get out. What are you doing? Get out of here, Charles! I said get out of here! That you're not supposed to be here! You see this? Do you see how people treat the tag team division? We have an interview with the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, and we have a referee just walking into our shot. That's the kind of disrespect that people have for the entire tag team division. And do you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Because we've had people like New Day and the Usos, incredible athletes, going out there and having hard-hitting, incredible matches, but they treat the entire tag team division like a joke. They go out there and they swivel their hips and they throw pancakes and they have rap battles and they play practical jokes. So tonight, Rowan and I, we're not just defending the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, no. We are defending an idea and we are trying to save the entire tag team division from people like heavy machinery. Because you look at Tucker, all-American wrestling champion. You look at Otis, Pan-American bronze medalist and Greco-Roman. But what do they do? What do they do? They go out there and they just thrust their hips and they talk about having a great time. Could you imagine Otis and Tucker as, as champions? What kind of example would they be setting for our future? That's idiocracy. You're right, Rowan. That would be just like idiocracy. They would be doing their shot. They'd have Charles Robinson coming in here. They'd grab him around the shoulders. They'd thrust their hips at him, and it would all be a big giant joke. It would be a joke again. We're trying to save the tag team division from being a joke. People should be saving, people should be thanking us. The entire tag team division should be thanking us. But we're not doing it for them. We are doing it for an idea. We are doing it for the tag team division and we are doing it for the planet because we are the planet's champions. And this is what heavy machinery does not understand. Blue collar solid is no match for champions fighting for the greater good. And next time, keep those referees out of my shot. Well, wow, Daniel Bryan certainly emotional when talking about while they're doing it. Booker T, you're in the Hall of Fame as a tag team. You're one of the greatest tag teams yeah, of all time. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, when you hear what he says, Daniel Bryan, about saving the planet, about doing it for the tag team division, what is your takeaway? You know, I, it's crazy, but I agree with him. I totally under, understand where Daniel Bryan's coming from. Me and my brother, who was in that same place once upon a time, trying to rid the tag team division of all the rubbish that was just running around, running amok of uh, uh, the company back in the day. So I understand is that heavy machinery, uh, you know what? 
I don't like the dancing either, so I understand where he's coming from. I actually agree with you. Brian wants to see them take it seriously. I'd like to see the same thing. Oh. All right, well, we're going to find out tonight if Daniel Bryan and Rohn are underestimating heavy machinery. But right now, we want to say thank you. We'd like to expend, extend a special thank you to X Ambassadors for Boom, an official theme song of WWE Stomping Grounds. It's from the album Orion, available now on Apple Music and also Spotify. All right, let's switch gears now. Kind of a lone wolf, Roman Reigns. Takes on tonight Drew McIntyre, who has the last year or so told anyone who would listen he wants to be at the top of the game. Well, it helps when you align yourself with the best in the world. Here comes the money. Here we go. Roman Reigns is something special. He has main evented WrestleMania multiple times. He is a multiple champion here in WWE. But he does not hold a victory over me. The big dog has never backed down from a fight, but tonight, maybe he should have thought twice. Truly, you gave me your best, Roman. We could be seeing a best in the world, coast to coast. Go, oh, Superman! Punch off the top rope! It's just your best. A right hand drops Shane, and Shane hit the official. Wasn't good enough. And McIntyre with a Claymore! To beat. Here's your winner! The best in the world. should actually be concerned with Drew McIntyre. Roman, this is my yard now. The stomping grounds. I'm going to hurt you. I am going to decimate you. McIntyre just wiped out Roman Reigns. I am going to end you. Jim's gonna regret ever being the boss's errand boy, trust me. Shane beat me the same way he's gotten everything throughout his entire life. Somebody gave it to him. Big dog, I'm gonna kick your ass, I'm gonna take your name, I'm gonna physically disfigure you. I want you to go home to your children. of your beloved father. It's got a psychopath from the table. And now the chase is on. to the back and tell Drew I'm going to whoop his ass on Sunday. Oh, I can smell that. You know what that is? That is the smell of victory. That's exactly what's going to happen to you, Roman Reigns, as this man, the Scottish psychopath, Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns, you're entirely too emotional. The mere mention of your family, and you freak out. All I've ever done is tell the truth. The truth is, I'm gonna hurt you. The truth is, when you go home, your family won't recognize you. Your children will scream at the mere sight of their beloved father. If that makes you angry, if that makes you upset, then that's on you, because the truth hurts. But I assure you, the truth will not hurt half as much as what I do to you tonight. Oh, he's so intense. That's what I dig about you, Drew. Yeah. 
you know, it's one thing to deal with Drew McIntyre. It's another thing to deal with Shane McMahon. But when you got to deal with both guys at the same time, even for Roman Reigns, you wonder if that's more than he should try to bite off. Bite off. Uh, David, I want to start with you. When you listen to these two and you see really how in sync they are, does Roman Reigns have issues tonight? I think Roman Reigns definitely has issues tonight because he's got to deal with both of them. And they hit it exactly right on the head. He is very emotional. Right now, Roman Reigns is reacting off of raw emotion. And what happens when you act emotionally? You can make rash decisions. Mm -hmm. You can make mistakes. And I think that's exactly what they're trying to do. And they've done a good job at getting Roman stirred up. Well, this has got to be this has got to be weighing heavily on Roman Reigns. I mean, he barely just squeaked by Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. Roman got to bring the pain tonight. He cannot underestimate Shane McMahon as well as Drew McIntyre. Because Drew McIntyre, on any given Sunday night, he can beat anybody. It's going to be interesting to see how. After everything we saw at WrestleMania, everything we saw at Super Showdown, if Roman Reigns is able to do what Drew said he couldn't do, and that's put the emotion to the side here tonight at the first ever Stomping Grounds. Well, I cannot wait for that WrestleMania rematch tonight, but guys, right now, it's all about the Cruiserweight Championship. That's right, Tony Nese faces the biggest challenge of his championship reign here tonight, three-way match. Anyone can be pinned, anyone can be submitted. Can the premier athlete survive here tonight? The biggest factor is the champion doesn't need to be pinned, doesn't need to be submitted to lose the Cruiserweight title. It's a tough night for Tony Nese. It's time for the first of seven championship matches here tonight at Stomping Grounds. The following contest scheduled for one fall is a triple threat match for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Introducing the challengers. First from Kobe, Japan, weighing in at 156 pounds, Akira Tozawa. Well, Akira Tozawa is here tonight trying to prove that consistency creates champions. Clearly one of the most outstanding performers this year in 205 Live. Tonight, WWE Stomping Grounds is presented by Gold Bond Powders. A little sweaty, a little sticky, try a little shake, get a little tingle. Tozawa trying to become a two-time Cruiserweight Champion. This superstar looking for gold for the first time in the WWE. Next, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 193 pounds, Drew Gulak. And it's a different Drew Gulak over the last several weeks, gentlemen. And Nigel, I want to ask you, do you agree with how this matchup tonight came about? Well, once Drew Gulak and Akira Tozawa pinned each other in the fatal four-way to determine Nisi's next challenger two weeks ago, Maverick had two options, a singles match to determine who faces Nisi or a triple threat. He went with the latter, and in my mind, all he did is he made Drew Gulak one step closer to becoming Cruiserweight Champion. Look, both of those athletes that are in the ring right now put in one heck of a fight in that matchup, but they had each other's shoulders pinned. I think this is the way it had to go. And from Long Island, New York, weighing in at 196 pounds, here's the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, the premier athlete, Tony. And you can see the purple, the gold, the colors of 205 Live on the back of the Cruiserweight Champion, Tony Nese. Tony and the crowd still filing in here to the Tacoma Dome, about 20 minutes away from the beginning of stomping grounds. And the question is, in 20 minutes, will Tony Nese still be the Cruiserweight Champion? Tony Nese took to social media this weekend posting that because of this match, tonight we will find out if I'm worthy to lead the pack. And by the end of this matchup, that question will be answered. Well, Aiden, he also said that he doesn't care about the odds. He knows he doesn't need to be factored in the decision, but he's not ready to lose the championship. Well, that's one thing all athletes know. I know anytime I stepped in the ring in a four-way match, 
in a three-way match. When anybody can be pinned, you know that's the deal. And oh, it's oh. Gulak right after Tony Nese, the champion. Look at Tozawa right on top of Gulak. And this is that new vicious style of Gulak. An aggression oh. out of the Obsidian, oh. Drew Gulak. We oh. hadn't seen before. Oh. And Nisa and Drew Gulak, who know each other so very well. As now Tozawa right back into the fray, and this is what Triple Threat Match is all about. I said it before, I'll say it again. Eyes in the back of your head when you're competing against multiple opponents. Whoa. Tony Nese able to land on his feet, and look at Nese. Oh. This is why he is the premier athlete. Combination offense, first cover of the matchup, and Tozawa able to kick out at two. Good start for the champion, Tony Nese. It's a wise strategy. Try to go for those covers early. End this match early while you can't have somebody out of the ring like Drew Gulak was. Nice counter, shoulders down again, and Gulak right on top. Oh. Nice oh. suplex. Oh. Shoulders are down. Oh. And a double kick out. Nice so close to retaining that cruiserweight title. So close to seeing a double pin there again. Look, Tony Nese wants competition. He has said that time and time again. He wants to face the best. I think what Tony Nese wants is to prove Whoa. his oh. worthiness as champion. Oh. Oh. Super kick Watch connects. Out. And there's Tozawa. Oh. And Tozawa now, no waste in motion. Here he goes. Oh, look at his sights. Well, Tozawa called Nice tough. He said Gulak was dangerous, but referring to himself, he said he was tenacious. Well, tenacious T right here. Come on! Raising the aggression Take level. Take a look at that one more yeah. time. Tozawa laying it on the line in this triple threat matchup. Incredible velocity there with a tumbleweed sent on. And again, no count outs, no disqualifications, pinfall submission inside the ring. Tozawa all the way to the top, looking down on the champion. Ooh. Missile drop kick. Do we have a new champion? And Gulak able to break things up. This is a good strategy for Drew Gulak. Let the other two competitors expend their energy and come in and just break up any pinfall, any submission attempt. And Gulak Ooh. tossed right back to the outside. And now Tozawa right. trying to position Tony Nese. Tozawa going up. back to the top rope. Might be a little too early. Yes. Oh, what a palm strike. And the champion turning things back into his favor. That's the thing. In these matchups, you got to go for it what you can, when you can. Oh. Often, not a lot of He's time. He's the cover, hooks the leg to retain the title. And again, Drew Gulak has to break things up. Like a vulture picking the bones of all the action, Drew Gulak. And guys, Drew Gulak created the opportunity for this match for himself. I absolutely did, making his return at 205 Live three oh, weeks ago. Hold on. Lifting up Tony Nice. Nice counter again. Both these superstars know each other so very well. As Gulak with a knee right to the jaw. Now aggressive, no nonsense. Drew Gulak is watch that. Oh! Drew Gulak on top as this cruiserweight title match continues. You keep playing where you shouldn't be playing. And you keep thinking that you'll never get burned. These boots are made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. It's time to kick ass. Evans versus Lynch. And names for the Raw Women's Championship. WWE Stomping Grounds Pay-Per-View, streaming live on WWE Network. Tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. As always, WWE Network is free for new subscribers. Roman. I know who Drew McIntyre is. I'm going to hurt you. And Drew McIntyre knows exactly who I am. I am going to decimate you. I am going to end you. At Stomping Grounds, I bounce back. And I'm kicking ass and I'm taking names. My first name, Drew McIntyre. WWE Stomping Grounds pay-per-view. Streaming live on WWE Network. Tonight, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. As always, WWE Network is free for new subscribers. 
triple threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship. Drew Gulak is tied up by Tozawa. Is Gulak going to submit as the Cruiserweight Champion makes his way back in? And Ooh. look at the strength on display. Two for one by Nice. And the champion now, oh, big forearm rocking Tozawa. Drew Gulak has questioned the leadership oh. ability of the Cruiserweight Champion. Since Nice won the title, and Gulak could be closing in on becoming oh, champion. Luck. Gulak, Gulak is locked in. Is this, is this it? But Gulak is locked in. Can Tony Nice navigate his way free? Is Nice gonna pass out? Look at Nice fighting. Nice got out for a moment. Nice is continuing to fight, trying to get look to the bottom. Look at Drew. Look at the eyes. Look at the intensity in the eyes of this Drew Gulak ripping at the hands, not Nies letting him get back. near the ropes. Drew Gulak's locked in. Got it again. The Gulak. There's nowhere for Nice to go. His knee's gonna. Oh! oh! Tozawa just saved the match for himself and for Cruiserweight Champion Tony Nice. High and back sends on from Japanese Sensation. And this is what you didn't see. Take a look at Tozawa. Presence of mind of the former Cruiserweight Champion all the way up and. Oh! Breaking the Gulak as Tozawa almost with a pin, now going into another hook of the leg, and Gulak this time kicks out at two. Extremely dangerous. The back sends on when you're in a Gulak. Submission attempt like that can cause a lot of damage. And you talk about Tozawa and the role he's been on this year. He'd be Oops. for the best as Gulak. Hoisting up Tozawa, who slipped down the back. Coming up, catches Gulak, Hurricane Rana. And this is that quickness, that elusiveness of Tozawa. As Tozawa trying to show Going some strength. And that's what's gotten Tozawa his numerous opportunities at the Cruiserweight Championship. Face plant from Tozawa. Oh! Tozawa follows up into the cover. Title's on the line. And Gulak kicks out again. What a near fall in this triple threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship. And ever since Gulak returned three weeks ago, attacking Noam Dar, he has been more oh. determined, more dangerous. Than he's he's ever up. Tony Nice now following right back in. Nice able to catch himself. Connects with a kick. Gulak's rocked. Nice springboard. Moussa connects. Champion into the cover to retain it. Tozawa oh. able to break things up. Moonsault splash landed a little bit low across the legs of Drew Gulak, but clearly enough damage done. Oh. Oh. Tony Nisu said he wanted to face Tozawa. Believe Tozawa was the best superstar to challenge him for the Cruiserweight title. Well, now both slugging it out. Oh. Oh. And Nice is out. Nice fight from Tozawa to open up the jaw of the champion. Nice was down, but he's certainly not out yet. Oh! Talk about a left hand from Tony Nice. And now the southpaw all the way to the top rope. Tony Nice. Way to, up there. Trying to hoist up Tozawa. Tozawa holding on, though, fighting through. Tozawa's showing you why he is indeed the stamina monster. Oh, champion laid out, won't you? Drew Gulak, all the way to the top. Superplex. But wait a minute, guys, look at Nice. He's up. Look at the Cruiserweight Champion. Gulak's nice. in the wrong part of town. Oh, oh, nobody there on the 450. Gulak trying to follow up. And look at Nice. Nice counters. Oh. Cover, That's cover. Tozawa with a shining wizard. Tozawa into the cover. Is that enough for the title? And Tozawa not able to keep Nice down. Take a look at this one more time. Boom! What impact on the shoulders. But Tozawa follows up with the shining bam! Wizard and not only break up the count, almost won him the cruiserweight title. We're back to present action in the matchup. Akira Tazel looking to follow up. Oh, that landed. Follow up indeed. And now Tozawa 
And all oh. the way to the floor. Oh, wait a minute. Gulak's in the wrong part. Oh. Can oh. He's connected. Knees caught. Wait Damn. a minute. Tozawa from behind. Shoulders down. Knees oh. able to kick out a two. Tozawa trying to follow up another roll through by Tony Knees. Shoulders down, oh. but the strength of the premier athlete. Bang. Oh. Good Lord. Get him the cover. cover. Is this enough? And no, and oh, another wow. kick out. That was close. Tozawa just able to kick out. And you got to wonder if he hadn't, would Drew Gulak have made that save? He wasn't there it? in time, no question. Look at the strength of Tony Nice. Ah, oh, the strength on display. Look at the landing. Boom! Oh. Awkward landing. Tozawa was dead weight. And now, two former friends that are bitter enemies is Gulak with a handful of beard. Drew Gulak, who called Tony Nice's victory a fluke at WrestleMania. Nice follows up. Nice proving him, and there is no fluke here. Ooh. Can Nice hit it again? Can Nice hit the running knees two times? Gulak oh. with an elbow. Gulak hoisting up Nice in a torture rack. We've seen this before. Nice counter by Nice, able to escape. Where did Tozawa oh. come from? Oh, nasty landing for Nice. Nice has been wiped out, and now Gulak loading him up again. Torture rack neck breaker. He got him. Gulak into the cover. And Drew He's Gulak done it. Hard. He's done it. Has captured the cruiserweight title. Tyler's your winner. And the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Drew. The face of 205 Live has changed tonight. Drew Gulak defeated Tozawa. Didn't pin the champion, but nonetheless, as Gulak predicted, we now have to call him one thing, and that is champion. Wow, what a match. That is only a taste of what you could expect tonight at Stomping Grounds. And there is only one place to catch all of the action at Stomping Grounds. That, of course, is on the WWE Network. So right this very second, head on over to WWEnetwork.com. Sign up because for new subscribers, Stomping Grounds is free. And it does not stop there in three weeks from today. New subscribers also getting extreme rules absolutely free. But let's talk about what's going down tonight. Book. Yeah, a super showdown rematch. Baron Corbin taking on the Universal Champion Seth Rollins, but he got a special guest clause, guys. Still to be determined later tonight. We're going to find out. And tonight, Alexa Bliss continues in her quest to ruin Becky's re or Bailey's reputation and also dethrone the hugger of the SmackDown Women's Championship with Nikki Cross by Alexa's side. And after Drew McIntyre crossed Roman Reigns, his match against Shane McMahon at Super Showdown, then mentioned Reigns family on Raw. The big dog has been chomping at the bit to get a hold of McIntyre, and tonight, he's gonna put his paws on him. Hey guys, Ricochet guy just was sitting out here a second ago. He earned a shot at the United States Championship, a championship that's near and dear to my heart, but he's gonna be taking on the precision tactician in Samoa Joe, the champion. Will it be his night? We're gonna find out. And the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships on the line. Heaven Machinery get their first tag team title opportunity tonight. But Daniel Bryan and Rowan have vowed to not only improve the tag team division, but also save the planet and recycle Heavy Machinery. And KO continues to be a thorn in the New Day side. And tonight he teams up with Sami Zayn to take on the tandem of Big E and Xavier Woods. And we have a huge championship steel cage match. Kofi Kingston beat Dolph Ziggler at Super Showdown. But Ziggler blamed the loss of Kofi's assist from Xavier Woods. So tonight, Kofi's all on his own as he takes on the show off inside of a steel cage. And Davis is arriving on the scene. Lacey Evans wants to make sure it's perfectly clear that she is not only classy, but nasty. She cost Becky one belt at Money in the Bank and swears she's going to make the man's new name after tonight, Becky Nobel. I did you and the entire WWE Universe a favor at Money in the Bank. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lacey Evans with a woman's right. Lacey Evans cost Becky Lynch the SmackDown Women's Championship. Lacey Evans woke something in me that needed waking. There is not a woman in this business that can keep me down. 
don't think that I won't find a way to get to you, Lacey Evans, because I will fight until I can't fight any... Becky, you are just like a dog chasing a car. And you wouldn't know what to do if you caught it. You see a tall drink of water. She's a classy woman. But deep down this flawless image is a tough as nails woman. And I promise you, when I get my hands on you, you will be Becky Nobel. I cannot allow someone like you to be the template. The next time that you come within striking distance of the man, I will give you exactly what you deserve. Oh, and look at Becky Lynch! Waste a little time! Deliver the best water! The man will dismantle you because I can. Uh, these two very quickly have developed, well, should we say, a unfriendly rivalry. Booker, I want to start with you. Have you ever seen a more unique debut packed with a punch than Lacey Evans has made the last couple of months here in the WWE? Uh, let's just say this, first of all. I like Lacey Evans. You know, uh, she, she has that, you know, the motto of, you know, good is good. But bad is better, you know. <laughs> so I like exactly. Nah, I like what she's brought to the table. But um, you know, the champion, uh, the man. You know, let's not let's not look past the man. The man has um has put the title you know on on top here mm -hmm. in the WWE. Everybody's looking. I, I always said you know once upon a time it was a, a question who has the better locker room, the the this company or that company. Now it's the men or the women and Becky Lynch. She's at the forefront. So what does Bucky have to do tonight to keep um, to keep uh, Lacey at bay tonight? I think she has to remember what brought her here. I mean, you heard from Becky. She admitted that she got a little too content after becoming Becky two belts. And then what happened? She slipped, Lacey got involved, right. and she became Becky one belt. Well, now it seems like she's got that hunger back, and that's what she needs. Otherwise, she may walk out of here Becky no belts. Uh, David, I think for, uh, for several I mean, come months. On, she never lost. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, my, my thing is this here. It's so hard, actually, to even, you know, put yourself, to, to, to capture two, that's one thing. You, you already made history. Only, you know, so many people have done, I'm one of them, have done something like that. So my thing is this, to, to go out and defend the championship and know the, exactly what you're doing, it's very important, and I think Becky's in a good place right now. Lacey, on the other hand, she's a newcomer. She's an up-and-comer, mm -hmm. and she wants it more than anybody. But don't we think that maybe Becky was so focused on Ronda Rousey, on Charlotte yeah. Flair, she had a lot that when, when somebody yeah. came in into the, into the picture, it was hard to turn her attention to well, Lacey Evans? Most definitely, and I don't want to discredit Becky in any way because, I mean, let's be real here. She had two championship matches on the same night, and she won the first one, which was against Lacey. So then Lacey came down and involved herself in the next one that she wasn't even a part of. So you got to give Becky a lot of credit. And with just Becky focusing on Lacey, I think it's going to be a long night for Lacey. Uh, Booker, quickly, 10-second prediction. You know, as I said, uh, you, I'm going to take my horse to the Old Town Road, and I'm going to ride till I can't no more. Heard that uh, yeah, that's what <laughs> Becky's gonna have to do tonight. All right, thank you all very much. What a fun hour it's been here on the kickoff show. WrestleMania was a night that Becky Lynch will never forget, but since then it's been one battle after another. Lacey Evans is certain that her raw reign will begin tonight. You will not have to wait. The man defends her raw women's championship to kick off stomping grounds next. Roman, I know who Drew McIntyre is. I'm going to hurt you. And Drew McIntyre knows exactly who I am. I am going to decimate you. I am going to end you. At Stomping Grounds, I bounce back. And I'm kicking ass and I'm taking names. My first name, Drew McIntyre. WWE Stomping Grounds pay-per-view. Streaming live on WWE Network. Tonight, 7 Eastern, 4.30.